bit of nostalgia. Some of my old pre-grouping wagons built from kits many years ago running through the Arslo. And that brings us to this little video which is about freight trains. And I thought I'd do a video on how my freight trains are put together. Now a number of them are just stock trains. As you can see from the storage cartridges here, the trains are made up in fixed formations. If I get right underneath you can see there's a D fitted freight, there's an E fitted freight, there's a mineral train. But when it comes to the pickup freights it's an entirely different arrangement. The layout has two stopping freight trains, one traveling in the up direction and one traveling in the down direction and both will call at the yard and using the goods loop as you can see on the far left here and the crossover which is here the trains have the ability to shunt Yarslow's yard which is here it comprises a bay platform where the branch engine is sitting then there's a bay siding, as it's called, next to the bay. And then we have a good shed road here. That includes the crane. And then there is a back siding and the cattle siding. And here's the cattle dock on the end. Well, the pickup freight trains do have cartridges. Here is the up pickup goods. And here is the down pickup goods. And you can see that these trains have wagons already. But instead of being a fixed formation, the trains change every time they come into the yard. Now it would be easy to arrive at the yard and think, I like the look of these coal wagons. Well, there's a couple of vans there that don't seem to have moved for a little while. Let me add those to the train. But that's not how it works. The wagons in the yard here are actually grouped together. And here's the chart that shows which wagons are actually grouped. You can see that there are 21 groups in all and that a group can be made up of up to four wagons. And these groups travel around the layout like this. You can see that there are four places that a wagon can be at any one time, either on the up pickup goods, the down pickup goods, in the yard, or in the branch. Now we've seen the up pickup goods and the down pickup goods, they are in cartridges. And here's the yard, I've seen plenty of shots of that. Well, here's the branch line on the layout disappears under this single tunnel mouth here and it runs under the scenery here and goes into this cartridge here. Here is the main line, there is space here for two other cartridges and the other main line is there so that gives you an idea of where this branch cartridge actually sits. There we go on the inside there. Now if you have a look at all the other cartridges you can see that they have tall sides and carrying handles. Well, the branch freight is slightly different. It has these drop sides so that I can actually access the track and change the branch freight around. And here are the wagons that are technically at the branch terminus. They're sitting on these two storage tracks here. So that's the fourth place that wagons can be. Now this little hieroglyphic map explains that the wagon groups start out in certain places. If you look at the up pickup goods we can see that wagon groups one, two, three, four and five or we can look at the chart and we can see that wagon group one comprises a couple of southern unfitted vans, an XP van and another southern XP van. Group two is a low fit with a different load and so on and so forth. 
If we look in the yard, we can see that we start with groups 6 and 9. And group 6 is actually empty. I'll come back to why that should be. And group 9 is a plank van with vent sides and a cattle wagon. And there we go. There's the planked van with the sliding door. And here's the cattle wagon. Now this little hieroglyphic tells us that when the up pickup goods arrive, it drops off group one into the yard and it picks up group six. The down pickup goods drops off group 10 and picks up group 15. And then later in the day, the branch train comprises groups nine, and 19 and we'll return later in the day with groups 7 and 16. So if we've got to make up 9 and 19 as a train we can see that group 9 comprises those two vans we just looked at the vent side and the cattle and then group 19 which is the 12 ton pipe wagon which is there that's the only three wagons that are in the train going to the branch today. The branch train coming back is groups 7 and 16. So that will comprise three wagons of group 7 and four wagons of group 16. So therefore, whilst only three wagons go down the branch, seven will come back. So here's our branch engine, the J72. That engages in shunting in the yard and it's got to make sure that the various groups of wagons are available for collection by the two pickup goods trains when they arrive and then it will make up the branch train and it will go to the branch with those particular wagons. Now of course because the wagons are in a group together doesn't necessarily mean they're in the same place as we can see this van and the cattle wagon are part of a group but it's right that they're put in their respective sidings in the yard. Now there are one or two other things that are important when it comes to the pickup freight and that is that the whole point of running these trains is to move freight from A to B so that this afternoon when the cattle wagon is collected to be taken down the branch that's reflected in what the yard looks like. You would expect that when the cattle wagon has been taken down the branch, the cows disappear as well. And that's because the cattle sit on these little plastic bases. And that's a concept which you can take as far as you like. This pipe wagon with its pipe load could arrive empty and be loaded I choose not to do that because my loads are fixed into wagons with all the various correct timbers and everything else but you could if you wanted to have removable loads and of course removable loads in coal wagons as well. Let me finish up by just saying that when the next operating sequence is run representing tomorrow the up pickup goods would drop off number two and collect number seven. The down Stopping freight will drop off number 11 and pick up 16 and the branch freight will comprise 10 and 20 and come back with 8 and 17. And so each day the consist of the various trains will change and the length of trains changes as well and that's where the variety comes from for the Yarslow pickup freights. Well, I hope that's been informative and gives you some idea of how the pickup freights are put together. I'll leave you with some shots of my heritage freight train. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe.